everyone, how's it going? So in today's video, I want to talk to you about taking the most efficient and the most useful notes that you possibly can in your university lectures. Now, I don't know if you can tell by the tone of my voice, but this is a topic that I feel very passionately about. And the reason why I feel this way about it is because it's something that I personally struggled with a lot throughout my degree. So for any of you guys who are new, I studied biomedical sciences at Newcastle University. And the nature of my le lectures were in a way that there was a lot, a lot of compact information and so much of it was new terminology, you know, so different names of pathways and molecules and abbreviations. And it was something that was very heavy in terms of its content. And because of all of this, it took me a really, really long time for me to optimize by note taking. And it wasn't until near the end of my degree, so around third year, where I eventually came up with a system that really worked for me. So I really hope that through making this video, you guys can take away some of the lessons that I learned near the end of my degree and apply it to the start of your degree. And hopefully you wouldn't be faced with as many of the struggles that I was faced with when I was going through this. All right, so in order to try and avoid making this video like 26 minutes long, I'm just gonna get straight into the points. Number one, and this is the most important thing that I would recommend to you guys, is do not copy the slides word for word. And that also means don't copy them in a way that is exactly what it says on the slide, but then written in your own words. A really, really big mistake I made when I was doing mine is that when I was sitting at the lectures, I would sit and I would try and like scribble down pretty much everything the lecturer was saying, even though we had the copy of the lecture slides on the computer system. So there was no need for me to take all of these notes. And also later on when the lecture had finished, I would go back to my laptop and our lectures would be recorded. So then I would watch the lecture again and pretty much write out or type out everything the lecturer said. It's absolutely not needed, guys. If everything is already on a slide for you, there is no need for you to write it out again. Now, this brings me on to point two. As I said, a mistake I made was I would pretty much take loads and loads and loads of notes in the actual lecture itself. And if you have ever done this in the past, you would know that by the end of the lecture, you will have written entire gibberish. Because if you're trying to catch up and write word by word everything the lecturer is saying, or trying to copy out everything that's on the lecture slide as the lecture is progressing, then you're not going to have enough time to write everything coherently. So what I would end up doing is I would just scribble along and do all of this kind of stuff on a blank piece of paper, and by the end of the lecture, I would kind of like put it in my folder. A week later, I would look and I'd be like, what have I written? Like, I can't read it, this is not legible, and I just, I don't know what to do with it now. And the problem with that is that it wastes even more time because it means you're going to have to go over it again and watch the lecture again and go through the slides again. And you really want to streamline your process because much like me, you may end up going a bit mad. Number three, and I think by far this is the most important piece of advice, is to be prepared before you go into the lecture. And I know that not everybody does this, and I know it's not always convenient, but when you can, I would say that A, print off a set of the lecture slides so that you don't feel like you have to copy them down as you're watching the lecture. B, skim read this the night before. And if there's an element of the lecture where you think, oh, well, this seems a bit complicated, I want to pay particular attention here, you can highlight it or put a little note to say that this is the part of the lecture where you might have to take notes because maybe the slide is unclear and you want to listen to what the lecturer says. And the best thing about doing this is that because you've already prepared your brain a little more, on what you are expected to hear, when you're actually in the lecture, then you can pay more attention because the things that the lecturer is talking about is more familiar to you. Now, something else that I think is very important, even though it's not directly related to note-taking, is that when you are in the actual lectures, um, try your best to just listen. This way you can absorb as much of it as you can, and then if you are struggling with something, you can go back and watch the review, the review video or the review of the lecture later on. And I say this because another really, really big mistake I made, um, particularly in my first year, was that I would go to the lectures and I would completely just sit there like this, like completely having everything go over my head. And then when I went home, I would sit and watch the lecture again on record and then make my notes and then learn. 
and it got to the point where I was like, well, why am I even bothering to go to the lectures, you know, if I'm not paying attention there and if I can't focus, then, and I'm going home and doing everything again, like, what is the point? Like, I'm wasting so much time. I know it's easier said than done, trust me, um, especially when you're like rocking up to like a nine o'clock lecture and you're tired and you're probably a little bit hungover, let's be honest. I know it's really, really hard to stay focused, but that is an area that I think if you want to improve yourself as a student, that is an area that I would highly, highly recommend working on. Anyway, let's move on to the next point. Number four, and once again, this is a mistake I would make, is I would get so obsessed about making the most perfect and the most beautifully looking notes. Now, this is something that a lot of people debate on because I know on YouTube there are like hundreds of videos of how to make really nice notes where people have like used eight different pens and like highlighters and coordinated everything. And trust me, that's what I used to be like but let me tell you, it does not help. Don't get me wrong, I'm all up for making your notes visual. So for example, using three highlighters to make the main points stand out. That's fine, because I understand that it's useful for visual learners. But there's a difference between using color to help you learn and to essentially turning your notes into like an art piece. Number five is don't rely on other people's notes. Now, something you will realize if you don't know already is that in university, people tend to share notes and share work a lot more than they might do in school. And while that has its benefits, and if you do have a really close friend that you can genuinely help each other out, that's great. But there are a few things that you really need to bear in mind, and these are things that I have seen in my own experience and have heard from my friends and colleagues. So firstly, there is a little bit of an element of competitiveness in university, and I know somebody who told me that when people would ask her for notes, she would like take certain chunks of information out because she wanted to keep it for herself and then give the notes to the person after removing certain parts. Now, I mean, although I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a great thing to do, it's kind of understandable because when somebody asks you for notes, you kind of have that feeling of, well, you know, I've spent all of these hours and all this time creating this stuff. Um, you know, why should I give it to you if you have been like, I don't know, going out partying or whatever and you're just, you just want my notes to pass. There is also the flip side of that. And that is if you are the pe person receiving the notes, you have to remember that even if you are very fortunate and that the person who gave you the notes gave you the most brilliant set of notes with all the information in, reading somebody else's notes does not compare to creating your own because the beauty of notes is that it's the process of making them in most parts it's the process of making them that really helps you uh, consolidate the information and really take it all in because if you were just looking for the information everything's on the lecture slides why not go and have a look there number six and oh my god this is something else i struggled with and that is if possible try your absolute best to keep on top of your lecture notes. It is far better to be on top of your lecture notes and write, I don't know, half a page of A4 after a lecture rather than fall behind and write four pages of A4 just on one topic. And let me show you an example from my own experience. So I had gotten to the point where I was really, really behind on my lecture notes because obviously I tried to make them look pretty, I was writing out so much, I was pretty much copying everything, all of the mistakes that I've shared with you so far, I was doing simultaneously. So obviously I had fallen behind and I was pretty much like maybe like 10 lectures behind, which is quite a lot to catch up on. And the problem was that I would go into a lecture and because I had been focused so much on like 10 lectures before, I wasn't taking in any of the topics. And obviously if I'm not listening properly to my current lecture, there's a very high chance that I'm not going to be listening in the lectures to come because I haven't understood this one, so I'm not necessarily going to understand the rest. Number seven is try and make funny anecdotes and maybe funny quotes or little doodles or little references through your notes as you go along. Now, I know this sounds a little bit silly, especially if you're at university, like studying something like really complicated, but it is those little things that really help you um, remember the fine details. And an example I always give whenever I talk about this is when I was in my first year of university, there was something called P53, um, which is the guardian of the genome. Now, I thought this was really funny because I had just watched Avengers at the time and I thought, haha, guardian of the genome, that's kind of like guardian of Asgard. And now forever, it's like burnt into my head that P53 is a guardian of the genome. Something 
as stupid and as simple as that can honestly make a difference between getting like a really good mark and quite an average mark. So yeah, get silly with your notes. Number eight is use abbreviations whenever you can. Now, a lot of students avoid using abbreviations in their notes because they think, oh my God, like if I go back and read my notes like uh, two months from now, then I'm going to forget what these abbreviations are. I'm gonna write everything out in full in all of the sentences. See, I would argue that that is going to be more detrimental than useful because let's say you do write something in, a, in, a, in an abbreviation and then you come back to it a few months down the line, you may well have forgotten what it means, but then the process of you looking it up and trying to find out what this abbreviation means is actually going to help you remember it more than if you just looked at it and was like, ah, yes, so PCR means a polymerase chain reaction. So just something else to bear in mind. Number nine, and this is a good one, it is remembering that your notes don't always have to be on paper, so they don't always have to be handwritten or even typed up. Depending on the kind of learner you are, I definitely think there's a lot of merit in recording your notes. So for example, when you've listened to the lecture and you've taken um, extra information that you want to you know, expand on your learning, instead of writing it down, why not record it and make it into an MP3 and just keep it on your phone? Finally, last but not least, and I know this seems like a bit of a um, obvious advice, so I've kept it till the end, and that is, guys, if you are somebody who prefers handwriting things, make sure you photocopy your notes and keep them on your computer because my god the number of incidences that i have heard when people have handwritten their notes and then they've spilled coffee on them or they've gotten ripped up or they've lost their bag and then you have all of these precious notes that are only in one hard copy format um, so if you lose them they're gone so if you can your university will obviously have photocopying supplies so if you do prefer to handwrite them make sure you have a backup copy Anyway, as always, feel free to subscribe. There are plenty more videos like this hanging around. And also, if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to contribute to the conversation, then let's have a chat down below. All right then, my lovelies, until next time, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah.